We're now going to take a quick look at an example. So given a unity feedback system with a forward transfer function given by g of s, which is equal to k times s plus 2 divided by s squared plus 4s plus 13, what we want to do is to determine if a particular point, negative 3 plus j0, is on the root locus. If it is, we want to determine what value of this gain k is going to be needed to get us to that point on our root locus. So the first thing that we want to note is we've assumed negative feedback because we're not told otherwise and of course up to this point in the notes that's all we've considered. But we also notice we're told that it's unity feedback. So because of that we know that our h of s is going to be equal to 1. And there's a little bit of notation difference here because this k is lumped in as part of the g and so I'll address that at the end of the example. So what we need to check then is our angle of our g at the given point. So let's check our angle of the g of s at 3, negative 3, plus j0. And one thing to note too that because the k is a scalar value, it's not going to affect the phase angle, it's just going to affect our magnitude. So what we're going to do then is we're going to plug in s equals negative 3 plus j0. So s equals negative 3 plus j0, which is of course just equal to negative 3 into our g of s equation. So we're going to have g of s is equal to our gain k times negative 3 plus 2 divided by, and then in our denominator we're going to have negative 3 squared plus 4 times negative 3 plus 13. And so if we evaluate that we're going to have k times negative 1 divided by 10. And so we can sort of write that out in our full rectangular form. So we have negative k over 10 plus j0. And so again, it can be helpful to think about what this looks like in our complex plane. So we have j omega for our imaginary axis and we have our real axis sigma. And so if we're at negative k over 10, and again, for right now, we're gonna assume that our k is greater than or equal to zero. So that means we're going to be some point over here. And so we can see that we can achieve that negative three plus j zero point if we select the appropriate gain k. So what we need to do then is figure out what, what, um, what gain that's going to be, but we can see we're going to have the appropriate phase angle of 180 degrees or some odd multiple of 180 degrees. All right, so what we want to do then is check our magnitude requirement, which was in equation three on the previous video. So let's check our magnitude. Requirement from equation three, and again, that was labeled in the previous video. And so what we want then is we want our magnitude of g of s to be equal to one. And so we can get our magnitude from this expression up here if we think back to our math review video. Um, of course we can see from this what our magnitude is going to be, but sort of going through the steps explicitly here, we can say our magnitude is going to be equal to the square root of our negative k over 10 squared plus zero squared, which is of course just going to be k over 10. And we can do a similar thing for our angle, so the inverse tangent and all that, but right now we're just focused on our magnitude. So if we want that magnitude k over 10 to equal one, of course that means our k has to be equal to 10. So to answer our initial question, we can say yes, that point negative three plus j zero is on the root locus. In order for that to be at that point, we have to have a gain value of 10. So now I wanna come back to sort of a, a, a quick note on the notation. So if we wanted to match this to the notation that we saw on the previous page, or on the previous video rather, so to match to our previous video, we would have had from the, from the get-go, we would have started with our g of s and k separate, so we would have had s plus two divided by s squared plus four s plus 13, and we would have just had some k which is equal k. And so how that would have changed as we were working the problem, our notation, of course, we would have had k, the magnitude of k times g of s equal to one. 
or in other words, we would have had k equals one over the magnitude of g of s. And of course, I've not included h of s because as we set up here for unity feedback, that means our h of s is just equal to one. And so the reason I didn't adjust that notation to match what we saw previously is it is important to be able to recognize notational differences and sort of figure out how to relate that to what you're comfortable working in.